If you work on a heritage railway, it's almost certain you'll be asked the question, diesel or steam? Many will be on Team Steam for its iconic design and history, while others will be on Team Diesel for sheer raw power. And you can't beat the sound of a good growl and a good amount of clag as the engine is fired up for the day's work. But what if you didn't have to choose? What if you could combine the power and fuel efficiency of a diesel with the look and feel of a steam engine? Amazingly, one example did exist, the Kitson Still Hybrid Locomotive. Steam engines in the 1920s had run on coal for the best part of the railway's history and the very basics of steam locomotion principles had remained the same since the days of rocket. Fire releases hot gases, gases turn water into steam and pressurised steam to move the pistons in the cylinders. But coal was still highly inefficient. Since the 1890s, Rudolf Diesel had been tinkering with a new type of engine. Instead of a standard petrol engine with due spark plugs to obtain combustion, diesel engines compresses air to a degree that the air combusts, igniting the atomized diesel fuel. It was much more efficient than coal, but diesel engines had one drawback, transmission. It had not been established yet how diesel engines could take their power and transmit it to the wheels of a locomotive effectively. In 1924, in a response to rising costs of both fuel and labour, thanks to World War I, a Leeds company called Kitson attempted to solve the problem in a rather unusual way. They developed a machine, a locomotive, with a diesel engine that had a reliable, proven transmission. They called the engine the still engine. In the diesel engine, only 35% of the energy it produces as heat is able to be converted into mechanical energy. The other 65% is lost as heat, though the vast majority of the heat is lost through its exhaust pipe. The heat of the exhaust gases is in excess of 700 to 900 degrees Celsius, easily enough to heat a boiler. Engines with boilers had no problem with transmission, and this fact had been proven for many years. After trials and tests, the Kitson company put three diesel engines onto the chassis of a 262 oil-burning tank engine and plonked a boiler on top. It had four inner steam-powered cylinders and four outer ones which were attached to the diesel engines. The exhaust fed directly into the boiler, helping the heat from the firebox to heat the water surrounding it. Kitson then used standard Hakwa valve gear connected to the steam cylinders and a crankshaft and jackshaft connected to the diesel cylinders, which helped drive the connecting rods. The engine was a dual runner. On one side, the engine would run conventional steam power, complete with firebox and an oil and water store in the bunker. But on the other would be the diesel engines and controls. It could run just one type or the other, or in some cases, like on a hill for example, both could be used together. As long as the steam was being produced, the engine would run. After several tests, the efficiency of the locomotive was very apparent. It was over 40% more efficient than many of the diesels being produced at the time and consumed only a fifth of the fuel equivalent steam engine would need doing the same work. The overall outlook was promising and the LNER who was watching the project appeared to be pleased with the result. So what happened? While the LNER looked on interested, it never financed the prototype and quite simply, Kitson ran out of money to invest in taking the project further. Despite its initial success, the boiler was considered too small and it was a shy steamer. The design was far from perfect. By 1933, Kitson was in serious trouble and time was called for the engine. The locomotive, which had only run test runs at this point in Yorkshire and was simply too difficult and unique to sell. In 1934, Kitson fell into the hands of liquidators. As the price difference between oil, diesel and coal fluctuated, it meant running costs for this er experimental engine would also depend on this. The LNER was not keen to invest further on something that had this trait and gave the engine to the liquidators who subsequently scrapped the engine to pay back Kitson's debt. 
The Kitson Steel engine was not the end of the story for hybrids. At the Horn Formworks in Tyneside, two Paragon Marine petrol engines were fitted to the chassis of a 060 steam engine. The engine differed from the Kitson as the petrol engine alone heated the steam and drove the steam to the cylinders, but it is counted as a hybrid because it stored steam as well as used it. The trials were less than successful and the engine was dismantled, with the chassis being used for the locomotive Stagshaw, which is still preserved today. While other countries such as the Soviets and the United States dabbled with this idea of hybrid locomotives, other than patents and a few test examples, no example of steam hybrid engines exists today. If the cost of fuel had remained stable and the onset of World War II had been apparent, then who really knew? Maybe instead of steam engines we know and love, they may have been pulled by these hybrid engines. We do thankfully have, a, however, have plans, patents and photographs of the engines, thanks to great archiving. And even though they were rarely, if ever, seen or used by the public, these bizarre engines, thankfully, will never be doomed to obscurity.